Well, we are here at the World Congress of the IMT, the International Marxist Tendency, which this year is taking place in very interesting conditions. We are basically witnessing the, the most important, most serious crisis of the capitalist system since the 1930s, or probably even deeper than the 1930s. Uh, and this crisis has already had massive uh, impact on the consciousness of millions of people, particularly in the southern European uh, countries. In places like Greece, Portugal, also in Ireland, in Spain, in Italy to a certain extent, um, hundreds of thousands of people have realized that the capitalist system is simply not working. They've uh, gone through three, four, now five years of uh, economic uh, recession. Millions of people have lost their jobs, have seen their livelihoods, their future destroyed. In the case of Spain, for instance, uh, only in the last one year, 800,000 jobs have been destroyed. And since the beginning of the crisis, it's more or less between three and four million jobs have been destroyed. This means a lot of people who previously have had a job, um, they hope to be able to uh, improve in life a little bit. Maybe they were paying a mortgage for a house, they wanted to go on holidays in the summer, they wanted to send the kids to university. And now all this has been destroyed for no particular reason. You see in the Communist Manifesto, Marx talks about the crisis of capitalism and he says that this is the most absurd crisis. It's a crisis that's created because too many things are produced that cannot be sold in the market. And this is what's happening. In Spain it's not a question, or in Greece or in Italy, it's not a question that there are no social needs to be fulfilled. It's a question that the capitalists cannot produce for a, for a profit. I mean, this, the best of uh, the Greek, Spanish, Portuguese youth are being forced into unemployment. In both of these countries, Greece and Spain, youth unemployment is now 53%. One in every two young people, particularly the most uh, educated people who've gone through university, have a university degree, uh, prepared, they maybe speak two or three different uh, languages, that is the most uh, vibrant and dynamic uh, part of society, the part that represents its future. It's being condemned to idleness, that they, 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 they cannot work. Uh, not because they don't want to work and contribute to society, but because the society can't, society, i.e. the capitalist system, can't offer them uh, a future. And this is what's creating this massive uh, questioning of the capitalist uh, system. We've seen it in Greece, we've seen it in Spain, we've seen it in Portugal. We will see it also in uh, Italy and also in other European uh, countries. People start to ask themselves, what's this madness? Uh, what are the markets? People wake up in the morning, they read uh, newspapers or watch the, the news on TV or listen to the radio and they say, the ma markets are nervous today, the markets are attacking Greece. Uh, but the markets are basically <clears throat> the way this system uh, works, a small, unelected minority of uh, capitalists, uh, investors, speculators who concentrate all the wealth, wealth that's been created by working uh, people and they take decisions that affect the lives of uh, thousands, millions of uh, and the futures of millions of uh, people. And this is a system that can continue to work like this and, and as I said many people are starting to question this system not only thinking about it, but also many people started to take action against this uh, state of affairs. We've seen big general strikes in Greece, we've seen big general strikes and mobilizations in Spain. We've seen, for instance, the miners' uh, strike in Spain that has now lasted for uh, a month and a half, nearly two months they've been on uh, strike since the end of uh, May. And they're basically defending nothing else than the future of the mining uh, valleys. 8,000 jobs, direct jobs, and 30,000 indirect uh, jobs. And uh, that's why they're fighting with such uh, ra apparently radical methods. But these are not uh, people who like violence or who are uh, normally uh, very radical in their daily lives. These are people who have families, have jobs, have uh, a house. Uh, but their future is being uh, taken away from them and they are fighting uh, back. And this is because they've become such a, this is the reason why they have become such an inspiration for hundreds of thousands of people around uh, Spain. And they have changed the whole uh, outlook of many people in Spain. And they've created this massive wave of spontaneous protests of uh, public sector workers, big demonstrations on the 19th of July. 
So this is the beginning of the beginning of a process of questioning of the capitalist system, which will continue for the next few years, will spread further, and will create revolutionary opportunities. And one of the things we have this, been discussing in this uh, conference is precisely this, the fact that revolutionary waves come once in a generation, they come once every maybe 30, 40 years. There was another revolutionary wave in the 1970s, many people don't remember that, and many people were never, never participated in that movement. But that was also a revolutionary movement in which hundreds of thousands, millions of ordinary working people and youth, women, uh, men, uh, also all, uh, all the people, they basically looked at the capitalist system and they could see it wasn't working. They tried to look for a different uh, alternative for, for a revolutionary solution. Many millions joined revolutionary organizations, trade unions, left-wing political parties, and through their activity, through strikes, mobilizations, political participation, they tried to change the, the society. Now, they, uh, that movement failed. It was derailed or defeated by, by the lack of a proper leadership. And now another movement, and that created a big wave of demoralization. People withdrew from active political participation. Membership of political parties and trade unions went down and the bourgeoisie was on the offensive. Uh, now it's uh, starting again. New revolutionary wave is coming and people are looking for ideas. And the task of Marxists in this uh, situation is to serve as the memory of the working class, the memory of past struggles, the memory of past movements, so that the lessons of the past uh, don't, don't need to be learned again through the experience of defeats and mistakes, but they can be trans transmitted to the new uh, generation. And I think that this is the reason why there is a general mood of, um, I wouldn't say enthusiasm, but there's a mood of confidence, that, that's the word probably, in this uh, conference. Uh, a mood of, uh, well, we are able to explain what is happening, uh, but it's not just a question of analyzing, it's a question of intervening, trying to transform the, the situation in the benefit of our class. And what basically we want to do is to want to enter into dialogue with advanced workers, advanced uh, youth, uh, and try to explain our ideas. And we are convinced that through experience, the ideas of Marxism, the ideas of socialist transformation, will uh, gain a massive uh, echo. Because socialism is a very easy, very simple idea to explain now. Uh, there's no need for mass unemployment, there's no need for these massive cuts in pensions, acquired rights, uh, education, healthcare, there's no need for that. Society produces enough wealth and there's enough productive capacity in the hands and brains of these millions of people who are now uh, condemned to idleness uh, to produce everything that is needed for society for everyone to have a decent uh, life. Most people don't want uh, much. People don't want to be Bill Gates and uh, have uh, money to burn. Uh, most people just, just want a future for themselves, for their families, for their kids, to be able to have a roof over their heads, uh, food on their table, maybe to go on a foreign holiday once a year and, uh, and be able to send their, to give their children a proper education. And, and so on. And that's, that's what most people uh, basically want. And this can no longer be guaranteed by the capitalist system. And that is what socialism is. The, the democratic and planned use of the resources that already exist in society for the benefit of the majority instead of for the private profit of a small unelected uh, minority. And these ideas can now connect with, uh, they have a ready-made uh, audience. And so that's why there is this uh, mood of confidence in this uh, Congress of the IMT. And we uh, hope to reach uh, wider layers uh, of workers, youth, uh, and enter into a dialogue with them about the need to build a Marxist alternative within the existing organizations of the working class, trade unions, left-wing political parties, that can make sure that this time, this revolutionary wave is not defeated, but it ends up in a victory for our class. And we eradicate once and for all, all this uh, unnecessary violence, oppression and suffering that millions of people are going through right now, uh, throughout uh, the world for no particular reason, no other reason than the private profit uh, making motive that is behind the capitalist uh, system.